Here we go. My name's Rob Brown. I am the owner and luthier at Axis Guitars, uh, located out of West Oakland, California. Cool. So, Rob, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? How long have you been doing this? Too long. <laughs> I've been doing this about a little over 16 years now. Okay. I went to uh, Roberto Venn School of Luthiery in uh, 99. And uh, it's about, a, at the time, it was about a five month, almost five month vocational program. I think it's a little bit longer now. They have uh, more repair and even an amp repair course worked in now. Um, and then from there, I moved out to LA where I. Uh, Pretty quickly got a job as a guitar builder for James Tyler Guitars, who does really high-end, essentially Strat-styled instruments. Um, worked a lot for the local sort of uh, studio and pro community, as well as, you know, everybody else in between. Um, and then years go by and I got more drawn towards uh, repair. So I eventually moved up to the Bay Area for a change of scenery and have been doing repair for pretty solid over 10 years now. That's awesome. Yeah. So this guitar is, is what is it again, Dad? Martin D42. Martin D42. And we are going to put a pickup in it around that. the strap. Excuse me, not we. <clears throat> Rob here. Oh, you yeah. know. It's always a group effort. The magician. <laughs> Today you worked on a pickup for an acoustic guitar. I did. I put, uh, I put a K and K transducer uh, passive pickup in a beautiful Martin. All right. So here's what we're putting in the guitar. Three small transducers. These will glue onto the bridge plate in between each pair of strings. This goes to your output. Super simple. Amazing sound. No battery to worry about, no electronics to worry about going down while you're uh, on tour, on stage, recording. To be truthful, from my ear, I really want to just hear the natural sound of the instrument reproduced. I really don't want to hear something different than what the instrument is doing acoustically. But what got you into doing what you do? I mean, you're like a doctor. Oh. The doctor of the guitar. Probably all started years ago, about when I was 15 or 16. I got just bitten by the guitar bug. You know, like most of us did in that era with Van Halen, Steve Ray Vaughan, Hendrix, Jimmy Page, all of those types of players. And uh, first started playing guitar when I was about 15. Wore down my parents enough till they bought me my first six string which if memory serves me correct, was a red area Pro 2 Strat. Oh my. Yeah. Awesome. And you got into this just because of the passion of music? Passion of music and guitars. Uh, like a lot of people, I was working a job that just I wasn't really into and really got into, really loved guitars, just six strings. Nice. It's always been my passion. And, uh, the 12 strings are the, are the, the red-headed stepchild or what? <laughs> No, 12 strings are great. Okay. I mean, I love everything, but there's just something magical about the six string guitar. Yeah. There really is. Les Paul, Strats, Tellys, there really is something undefinable that cemented itself in this era of our history on this planet as something you really can't put into words that has kind of transferred into music that just captivates people and musicians. And really a lot of it for us that play is it's based around guitar. And the body of the work comes from the Exactly, machine. yeah. Just the sound, the all the different styles of music. You know. For me it's been it's always been about late sixties through late eighties is where my music tastes gravitate to. Well, it's crazy, that's what the Texas music scene is too. But yeah, it's all about Loud guitars, big amplifiers, and you know all the stuff we can't do nowadays. Slide. Noise ordinances, and oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> nobody wants to lug around 412s to gigs anymore. Yeah. <laughs> After to... high school, went off to college, got a degree, did everything I was supposed to do, but just wasn't really that happy doing what I was doing. And uh, the world of guitar building came in to my focus, and you know saw that it was something you could do. What brought you to Oakland? Uh, years after building 
Um, I started getting some repetitive stress injuries from just the day-to-day -day repetition of building guitars, uh, working with sanding, scraping, filing, doing tons and tons of fret levels on every single neck that went out the shop that I built. Um, and so I had to take a little pause from the guitar world and I needed a break or I guess you could say a change of scenery from Los Angeles. So, and, you know, you're a small company, I think, to see that, but at the same yes. time you work with a broad variety of musicians Definitely. that are not just in California. No. They're also across the country. I mean, how, uh, how has that affected your business and maybe um, your networking and in some in regards to your work? A lot of it is just really, for lack of a better way to put it, get, getting noticed for what you do. I have uh, someone that sent me a guitar from D.C., uh, the D.C. area that needed a neck reset, refret, a bunch of work, and he unfortunately couldn't find anyone that either wanted to take the job or he found competent in the area, so he sent it out to me. Mm -hmm. um, I have friends stretching up through northern southern California, uh, up in Oregon, even a little further, friends up in uh, B.C. that will send me instruments or plan a road trip fill their trunk up with guitars and bring them down. <laughs> sure. Okay. Um, and a lot of what that's done is, like I said, just helped kind of sort of spread what I do out there. So what are you doing right now? So right now I'm fitting the jack. Um, it needs to sit in a specific way. Um, you want a specific amount of the jack sticking out through the block of the guitar. Okay. Too little and you can't get the plug in. Um, so, um, and this screwdriver from Ace actually is the perfect size to put inside the jack and guide it through. I've been very fortunate to work out of some really well-regarded shops and really pushed my skills to, you know, the top of what a lot of people are doing. Yeah. That's really cool. Yeah, guitar repair, it's a very diverse field where you can find people who can simply fix your guitar and people who can really work magic and turn it into a work of art. And just my nature as a human being pushes me to always kind of think of what's beyond what I'm already doing. Can I do it better? Can I make it nicer? Cool. Making an instrument play as good as it can possibly play. Milking every ounce of just vibe out of the guitar. And your company is called Axis Guitar. Correct. How did that name come about? Jimmy Hendrix. I figured Axis Gold. Pretty much, yeah. I mean, it just, it was a name that resonated. Like anything, it's so hard picking a name as something you want to brand yourself. And it also seemed to harken back to a time which I find myself gravitated towards late 60s, through the 70s, through the 80s, when you had an aesthetic of small business service stations, you know, the gas stations where they also had, oftentimes they'd be family owned, really great branding and logos with uh, classic cars. It wasn't corporate America then, it was maybe the America's America. Yeah, it was more so of, you know, it was at the time where the American dream really, that those two words actually still held mm -hmm. a lot of weight. And would you, you, yeah, would you say you're living the American dream now? Uh, as far as what the American dream probably is, <laughs> I think that's up to every human being to decide what the dream really is or isn't and go after it. Cool. Okay, man. Well, hey, pleasure to meet you. Yeah, you too, Houston. Thanks, man.